Coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our guest tonight, the Mayor of Long Beach, the Honorable Bob Foster, as we continue our 22nd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We're delighted to have as our guest for the entire show, the mayor of Long Beach, the Honorable Bob Foster. Bob, welcome back to our show. As usual, it's a pleasure being here, Art. Thank you, Bob. Uh, you're coming to the end of your eight years as mayor, and as most of our viewers know, you chose not to uh, run as a write-in, which you legally could have, and the polling indicated that you probably would have been successful in that effort. Uh, tell us why you decided to not run. Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, I've enjoyed the seven plus years so far. I think it's been a, a great experience, a rewarding experience. I'm very delighted I've done that. And I was contemplating, actually I was planning to run again and run as a write-in. And I always, it was not without some mixed emotions. I felt I was being a little bit pulled into doing it. And the, the key factor, the deciding factor, was uh, a very close friend of mine became but diagnosed with a a terminal illness, and I that caused me to reflect on what I wanted to do with whatever years I have left, and uh, I decided I, you know, I, I think it would be better for me and my family to not run for office again and to pursue some private pursuits, spend more time with my grandkids, do some things in the private sector. I'm still going to be active. I'm going to do I think a number of things. Uh, overall, what I really want is the freedom to pick up and do something. Uh, on a moment's notice. And you can't do that in this job. This job is 24-7. And uh, I may never do that. I may, I may want to go to Italy for two months and really learn the language. I may never do that, but I'd like to have the, the ability and the freedom to do it. Well, uh, we thank you for your service to the city. And uh, uh, as I indicated, uh, polling indicated that you very likely would have been reelected. So people generally are pleased with the job that you have done. But let's, let's look back over your eight years and what would you say are some of the more, more significant accomplishments? I know pension reform has to be near the top of the list. Well, pension reform is actually part of the overall uh, fiscal, fiscal discipline in the city. I think, first of all, my view of my job and I think uh, my view of anybody in public service, your primary job is to leave the institution or the city or whatever you serve better than you found it. Uh, there, as you know, this last seven years has been very tough. No one anticipated the financial difficulties that the country would have, and certainly that's gone down into local government. So I'm leaving this place much better on a number of accounts. Financially, we have a surplus this year. We will be balanced, uh, really balanced structurally for the next three years. Uh, and uh, from a financial standpoint, we're in very good shape. Uh, we have crime at historic lows. Uh, we've, uh, I've been able to help bring technical training back into the schools. We've cleaned up uh, the environment. The environment is much better, particularly at the port. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of those things. Those, I think uh, overall in many areas, uh, the city is in much better shape. Uh, I count pension reform as part of the overall financial discipline. I think that was important to do. When I announced it almost three years ago, people thought you're never going to get that. And uh, fortunately, we not only were able to obtain pension reform, but we did it at the bargaining table. And I want to point out, uh, I would have gone to the ballot if I had to. I stated publicly it was not the, the right way to do this, but if you have to, you have to. And the cities that have gone to the ballot on pension reform, San Diego and San Jose in particular, they're still in litigation. They have not received one dime in terms of savings from pension reform. We will get, I think, uh, it's about a little over $11 million to the general fund this year, and it will save the city of Long Beach from all funds, $250 million over the next 10 years. And we started getting those savings immediately. So that was a, that's an important that's a, point. Absolutely. What would you say was your major disappointment? Uh, major disappointment was not being able to uh, get the infrastructure bond passed. 
uh, I would have uh, I'd like to have had that happen. I would like to actually take another shot at it. Uh, I do think that we have been fortunate that we've had some uh, one-time revenues. We have $62 million this year in one-time money to do capital improvements. So we're making some progress towards streets, roads, water systems, uh, our public structures, not as quickly as I'd like and not as, not as uh, in, in the quantity I'd like. But I would have liked to have had that done. We have I know hard... also that you campaigned when you first ran for mayor on increasing public safety, the number of police officers up to 1,000, and because of a variety of factors, including the recession, uh, we're down to about 750, 780, and that has to be one of your disappointments, even, no, though, no, even actually, though crime no. has gone down. Well, what's, what, what's the standard here? The standard here... The standard here is to have crime low. It's not just to have more bodies on the street. But we've gone through this many times on this show. You do agree we would it would be good to have more police officers. Sure, and we're hiring. We're doing. Two, we're going to do it, uh, the academy this year and academy. Well, the next academy year. will just cover the no, those it, who it, are there's, leaving. There's a slight gain as well. Look, you can play this game about bodies. What you really want is a safe well, city. Well, we went through this. I said, well, then, then yeah, cut it down yeah, to 500. And I'm, and I'm right. You're wrong. All right. They cut it no. to 500 if bodies no, no, don't no, count. No. That, it, it's, uh, look, uh, the one thing I've learned as part of being mayor, it's not just about numbers. Yeah. It is about effectiveness. And, and crime and, has gone down. Well, yes, sir. And this, this police force with this leadership has done an excellent They've job. Done a wonderful, but don't we need more police officers? Yeah, sure. Are you, yeah, you'd like to have more. But, you know, look at what the statistics are. We're doing very well. We're, well, we're at generational lows on crime, Art. It's wonderful, and we have a great police department and a great chief and all, but you would admit, and the, the community certainly wants more, certainly more gang officers, more police officers can do a better job, uh, even even better job. Sure, more is always, more is always better, but, uh, you know, you have to... We have to balance that. But you campaigned between. on a thousand, yeah, so you no, agreed. No, no, I campaigned, so you agreed. I campaigned on adding a hundred police officers. Yes, and we and got you halfway have to 50 there and couldn't and make then, it. Yeah, I admit that. So, I'm not okay. denying that. Okay, so and you, I've also learned a lot in seven years <laughs> that you can't always keep your promises no, because of circumstances. No, that's the only promise I was not able to keep, for one. And secondly, I've learned a lot more about what it is to, to, for policing. It is not just numbers, and we can go on this forever. Yeah, okay. Look, the fact is. The fact is, we could not add 100 officers. It was just financially impossible. Would I like to have more? Yes. Okay. But look at what the look at what the crime statistics are. Well, we've cut the hemorrhaging by having an academy that will cover those that are retiring. We actually will departing. add some more. We will add a few okay. officers. Okay. As well. Okay. Well, we'll be back with more of our show. We have to take a pause for these messages. <laughs> At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com. The Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. Hello, I'm Jessica Hardy, a proud Long Beach native and a member of the USA Swimming national team. Having spent much of my life in water, I've developed a deep appreciation for the valuable role that this precious resource plays in our lives. In recent years, California's water supply has become unreliable. To address this reality, Long Beach residents have dramatically reduced their water use through permanent lifestyle changes. In doing so, Long Beach has made itself a leader in water conservation. As I work hard to achieve my personal goal of qualifying for the 2012 Summer Olympics, I encourage you to continue your tremendous efforts to use water in smart and responsible ways. So join me and your fellow Long Beach residents in strengthening the water conservation movement. By making small but significant changes in our water use habits, together we can ensure that we have a reliable water supply for many generations to come.
At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach.